Hello, and you join me today for a video with a bit of a difference because I'm not on a collection run or a delivery run today. I have instead come to the middle of a roundabout. And the roundabout in question is the Shepherd and Flock roundabout in Farnham in Surrey. And this is the largest inhabited roundabout in the UK. And it has a few key differences. First of all, you can live on it. It even has a pub. There's an entire little community of people who live in Moor Park Lane in the centre of the Shepherd and Flock roundabout. So perhaps the story begins just across the road from the roundabout here at Bourne Mill, which is now an antique centre. But back in the 17th century, this was a bustling corn mill producing corn for the Farnham area. And the road which we're on here just went straight across because the roundabout didn't exist. The roundabout was only put in in the 1970s. Once it was put in, these houses and the pub found themselves marooned in the centre of the roundabout. But where we're standing now would simply have been the road junction. So you've got the road coming in from Farnham and the Bourne Mill just ahead of us there. Where this post van is coming from, that would have been the road that heads off towards Guildford the A31 as it is now and if you'd followed the post van back in the day down Moor Park Lane as it's still called Moor Park Lane will take you eventually to Waverley Abbey and this was a route that monks would have taken to get to and from the mill so here we go here's a map showing what the road layout would have looked like before the roundabout was added in the 1970s I've added a pin so you can see the location of the pub now. So the yellow pin marks the Shepparton Flock pub, which is still marked PH on this map, so the pub looks like it has quite a long history. And here are the roads as they were. No roundabout in sight, the pub simply sat at a junction on the Farnham to Guildford Road, with Moor Park Lane heading off to the right there, to the right hand side of the pub, as it still does now. Uh, it's not quite a junction, is it? It looks like it was a, more of a larger triangular junction with quite a sizeable green space in the middle, kind of where the pub seating is now. It was probably quite nice, I'd imagine, and certainly less busy than this is now, traffic-wise. And here we go, here's a line showing you where the roundabout would eventually end up. You can see the southern part of the roundabout used part of the already existing Farnham Bypass, which had been built beforehand but the addition of the rest of the roundabout to the north completely enclosed the pub and the few houses within it. And finally, here's a bit more detail showing you how the addition of all the main roads surrounding the roundabout have completely changed the road layout over time compared to how it used to be. So since 2021, the entire centre of the roundabout, this whole community has been a conservation area. Moor Park Lane behind me is no longer a through road for traffic anymore, but it is a bridal path. You can follow it into the Moor Park estate. And indeed, in 1897, the current landowner at the time attempted to close access to the estate, just at the bridge where the roundabout now crosses Moor Park Lane at the edge of the roundabout. And that led to the Battle of Moor Park in 1897, which sounds a lot more violent than it really was. It was more of a protest than a battle. Around about 500 people, including town council officials, came to Moor Park Lane and demanded that they should keep their access to the estates uh, and the public rights of way. I believe they forcibly opened the gates and demanded to the landowner that they should keep access and obviously they were successful because to this day you can still go down there. This is just down the road from where I, I work at TMC. I drive around the Shepherd and Flock roundabout on a regular basis. There's also a road that's slightly unusual for a very important reason. So we're just going to go and have a look at that now. Mm. So to get onto the roundabout, you have to turn right into the centre of the roundabout itself, obviously. But to do that, it means that you temporarily have to drive on the wrong side of the road. And I shall show you why. So here's the main road onto the roundabout as it is now. And here is the little entrance road that leads onto the centre of the roundabout from the roundabout itself. So here we are, good timing. This van will be able to demonstrate it for me immediately. You can see that he has to turn right out of the end of this road, which means temporarily you have to drive on the right-hand side of the road. So here we are. 
I'm now signalling right to turn onto the centre of the roundabout, onto this slip lane here, into Moore Park Lane. And as you can see, I'm turning into this road on the right-hand side of the road, and I'm just now moving back over to the left. Once again, back as normal, back on the left-hand side of the road. So it's a very rare situation where you actually have to drive, albeit briefly, on the wrong side of the road. And I can't think of another place where you have to do that, that I've come across anywhere. I've been standing here for ages. I wanted footage of someone driving onto the roundabout, but no one is coming in. So these days there's a subway which allows pedestrians access to the town centre from here without having to cross the very busy roundabout, admittedly. And we are going to turn left at the Shepherd and Flock pub, which in the old days would have been meant turning onto the A31. So just off to our left here, as you can see, is the way on and off the centre of the roundabout as it is now. That wouldn't have been there, of course. And I don't really think there's anything up here other than a yard of some kind. And this is the last remaining part of the old road. Or is it? Because I have crossed over to what is now the north side of the roundabout, but back in the day would have just been where the road continued from the pub. So I am now walking along what is essentially a section of abandoned road. Although, I have to admit, I was hoping to see some little clues, maybe a few old uh, cat's eyes or potentially even road markings left over from back when this was the A31. However, I think pretty much all evidence of it ever having been the A31 has long since gone. I don't think this path is part of the original road. So here's the path I've just walked down, which follows the old route. And when the roundabout was built, it was replaced with the modern day A31. There is potentially a little bit of a clue here. I've just left the path where I was walking. The end of this road where I've parked up is obviously the remains of something that used to be more of a major route. We've got uh, ancient old cat's eye remains of here. And these days it's just a dead-end residential road. I'm going to reset the trip computer now. There we go, that's zero. And I'm going to head off on one lap of the Shepherd and Flock roundabout and see how far it is. And we're back on the wrong side of the road, in the middle of the roundabout. And actually, it's exactly half a mile, pretty much exactly half a mile all the way around that roundabout. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this little video with a difference about the Shepherd and Flock roundabout. Do hit the like button if you've enjoyed the video, and hopefully I'll see you again soon on some of my more usual adventures going all across the UK, driving for TMC, delivering and collecting vehicles. And now I think I might head to the pub.